Welcome to Learning Analytics Tools course. This is the introduction to machine learning part 2. So in machine learning there are 4 steps. The first step is data collection and data processing. This is similar to what we saw in learning analytics. Uh, in this step we have to decide what data to collect and why we have to collect and uh, importantly we have to make sure that whether data is available or not. Also we have to do the data pre-processing. Uh, like uh, removing the missing values or outliers, ensure that there is no bias in the data. Also, if you find any errors, you have to remove those data. The second step is choosing model or algorithm. That is like which model to use for the data on research question you are selected. This step includes decision of choosing the suitable algorithm. And the third step is training and testing. So, now you have data. You collected data, you have a research question, and you also have the model to use it for your analysis. And uh, the next thing is you have to train and test. So, you have to classify uh, your data into training and testing data and use the data of training and testing. Training involves the process of determining the parameters of model using the data. Uh, you are creating model using the training data. And testing data will be used to evaluate the performance of the model. You can create uh, more than one model and you can compare the performance of the models using the test data. So, let us look at the type of ML algorithm. There are four types uh, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, and recommender system. In this course, we will talk about supervised and unsupervised machine learning techniques. So, what is reinforcement learning? Reinforcement learning is mostly used in uh, neural networks recently and recommender system is the system which uh, in an education context uh, which recommends uh, based on the student's interaction, uh, it recommends what to do next like uh, provide you the questionnaire or uh, new content or uh, new example something like that. In a recommender system in other context it can be recommending a new algorithm itself or recommending a new program or new strategy something like that. Let us start, let us start with the supervised algorithm. Uh, supervised algorithm is a developer model or function that maps an input to one output with the help of label data. So, you have to find the uh, mapping between the input and output. What is input and what is output that let us see. For example, you have collected the data uh, of student, uh, three students here. You collect the data of a three students and uh, your data that is the average session time. Uh, imagine they are uh, working on a MOOC or, um, uh, or a metal kind of uh, daily. Let us see it is a MOOC. First you have to see average session time. So, in a MOOC they might be logging into the course for several times. So, what is the average session time uh, the student uh, when he is uh, interacting with MOOC. So, I say 34 minutes, it is given in minutes. And uh, number of videos the student watched overall may be 12 or 30 or 25, that is the number you want, second feature. The other input we can have is average time on each video in minutes. Like uh, you watch 12 videos, but what is average time uh, you spend on each video, say 2 minutes. So, uh, some videos you might have watched more than 2 minutes, some, some videos you might have watched less than 2 minutes, but that is average you can compute. Also, we can talk about number of interactions in forum, like a 10, 20 or 6. So, I assume that there are 4 features I can collect from the uh, MOOC data. I have a log data, I computed these 4 features using Excel or um, written some script to capture it from the raw data. Also, I have the student's performance in the uh, final exam or the exam uh, conducted after the MOOC course. So, I have the final exam here. I will consider this input that is which I can observe like x1, x2, x3 or x4 all are same features like xi. The i here is 1, 2, 3, 4 features and uh, I will consider this uh, performance uh, as a predictive, predictive value or a dependent value. This performance is depend on these 4 values. So, that is why it is called dependent value. These are all independent values. So, we call that as a y that is the performance as a label uh, y and xi is the features x1, x2, x3, x4. Here I have a student A1, A2, A3. Now we want to create a model for this data so that if a new student A4 comes with uh, say different time 42 and uh, his number of videos watched it is say 36 and he watched only 1.5 minutes. 
uh, number of interaction is say 30, what will be the performance? So, the idea in machine learning is that you have a supervised uh, data that is you have uh, students interaction that is observation input data also the label create a model using this data and test it or predict the uh, performance on the new student or new data you are yet to see that is a machine learning supervised learning means. Let us uh, understand what is the uh, now let us understand what is x y x1 y1 means. So, a label data set that is x i y i where this y i could be either an uh, element uh, belong to a finite set or class or real number. So, the x x i that we saw in a previous slide that uh, four features we collected from the MOOC data interactions y i over there is uh, performance or uh, student score. The y i can be um, uh, pass or fail. pass or fail or the real number as we saw in the last uh, example. Pass can be denoted as 1, fail, fail can be denoted, denoted as a 0 or it can be apple, orange or other fruit. We can denote this as 1, 2, 3. So, the now the y i uh, is set of 1, 2 and 3 in this example. Um, Similarly, y i can be 0 or 1, it is a binary, uh, it is a real num the set of numbers or the real numbers as we saw in the previous class like performance in the exam like 63, 40 or 70 something like that. So, examples for supervised algorithm is that uh, we can predict students final uh, mark, uh, final exam scores uh, like uh, based on the interactions uh, or the based on the interactions in the class in the environment. Or we can predict in MOOC which user will drop out, uh, drop the course in 5 weeks or 6 weeks something like that. The dropping will be binary classification saying that you will drop or not drop. Or which user will uninstall the app uh, that is churn rate. Uh, suppose consider you are creating a education mobile app and you want to know which user will uninstall that app and when they will uninstall. Can we predict it based on their interaction with the app? Then you are predicting whether uninstall or install churn rate uh, that can be again 0 to 1 uh, binary classification problem and predicting uh, the student's performance uh, in a nest question uh, that is a more finite level uh, prediction that is based on the student's interaction with the system for say last 10 minutes or last couple of sessions I want to predict whether the student will answer the next set of questions given to him or not. If the student is not going to answer, you might consider giving the less difficult questions or providing hints or asking them to read something that will help the student's time and also student can learn better. So, these are the examples of uh, supervised learning. In this all examples, we know um, we want to predict the students something like a final exam score. We should have the final exam score, we can collect it. Also, we want to know whether students drops the course or not, we know what to predict you know what is the value you are going to predict also you have to come up with the set of input features like x1, x2, x3, x4. So, the in supervised learning you know what is the input also what to predict. If you have both x1, xi and yi then it is considered to be a supervised learning approach. So, given the examples you saw in the previous uh, slide, can you list down other two examples for the supervised learning problems uh, from the data collection we discussed in the last week. Uh, list what is the independent variable that is xi, what is the dependent variable that is yi that is label. Uh, list down two problems and uh, list down uh, its uh, independent variables and uh, dependent xi and yi. Uh, after listing it down let him to continue. So, you might have listed down um, some of the examples like x i y i. Um, uh, so, let us consider that you have x i and y i. Uh, say there is a simple example uh, students id there are say 7 students and we have the attendance percentage uh, in the semester. Also, we have the final marks uh, in the semester. Now, this is x i and this is y i. I want to predict the students uh, final map score uh, final marks in the exam using the attendance percentage. So, or uh, you can have a multiple uh, input uh, values say x1 and x2 for example, attendance also the mid sum marks. So, I have two marks, two data and input features I want to predict the students um, 
final mark. So, that is y i. The y 1 is the final mark, the real number and x 1 and x 2 is here. So, in this case, we have both uh, x 1, uh, x 2 also the final mark. So, this is the supervised learning uh, technique should be used for the uh, prediction. So, what is unsupervised learning? So, we said that uh, supervised learning has both x i and y a. Unsupervised learning has only the x i. We do not know what we are want to predict it or um, that is like we have observed the students interaction, but not sure what to predict that is one thing or you do not have historical data. Uh, that is that uh, in the previous uh, slide, we saw that uh, students uh, attendance, midterm marks and uh, exam scores available, but uh, that data available from your previous uh, years teaching record or some data available already, some students have taken the exam and everything. You want to predict the students performance in the current uh, batch. You do not have any historical data of the score or something. In that case also you can use the unsupervised learning approach. So, in unsupervised learning approach we have x1, x2, there is no uh, y, we do not know what we are predicting, but we have collected a lot of data, engagement, everything. We want to see if there any pattern evolved from the data or any clustering happens from the data. Uh, the for example, um, so given a new article, uh, given a news article, um, classify the news article as a sports, entertainment and politics. Uh, in the Google news, uh, it happens uh, automatically without uh, uh, having labeled it as a, um, uh, classifying a sports or entertainment. Uh, or uh, if we had a lot of human data labeled all these news articles automatically, then this is the supervised problem. Consider uh, there is a given news article, uh, a topic, a one news item, uh, say there was, um, uh, there was a festival in a particular state and we want to collect all the related article from the different newspapers. If you want to collect about that particular news from a different newspaper, news publishers, then it can be an unsupervised algorithm because uh, we may not know uh, labeling of this algorithm ahead of the time. So, there. Uh, the system uh, automatically groups the similar news, for example, festival in a state uh, Uttarakhand. And uh, if you want to consider that news, it uses the keywords in those news articles and tries to find is there a similar keyword available in any other uh, news uh, magazines or newspapers. Then it uh, collides everything together and puts it under one particular news heading. If you go to uh, Google News and if you use it, uh, news.google.com you will see this kind of uh, grouping together happens using unsupervised learning algorithm. And other one is uh, group uses based on the profile data. Uh, suppose you want to um, uh, create a project or a lab course or something like that and you want to group the students based on profile data like based on their previous background or the uh, branch in um, their uh, class 12 or a diploma or some other thing or their uh, background information, you can group that information and you can create groups and assign some tasks to them. Or group the students in a class based on engagement in the class. There are some students who are highly engaged, some students who are not engaged, you might find a grouping of these students and uh, you may want to mix them to make a better peer learning or something like that. So, in, that, in a nutshell, uh, there is a uh, difference between unsupervised learning and supervised learning is uh, consider we have attendance in percentage, uh, midterm marks. If I plot that in x and y axis uh, and uh, I have plotted like this and I have no idea what is this student belongs to, what is this student belongs to. So, if I apply a, a grouping algorithm or clustering algorithm, I can group this as uh, one group and this as the second group. Or I think if I want to apply further, uh, these two groups may not be right. I want to apply three groups. Uh, maybe I should go and uh, create a new group. Maybe this is a one group. This can be the second group, and this can be the third group, and this can be the fourth group. Uh, how many clusters is good? Two or four? Uh, that we have to identify by using the uh, mechanism of uh, errors or minimal errors. We will talk about that later in a clustering class. So. Given this data without any label, we can group them into two groups or four groups. So, the clustering algorithm can identify the uh, groups with a similar uh, behavior in the data. Whereas, in supervised algorithm, uh, we know there are uh, two groups here. Uh, these students have scored uh, less than 70 marks uh, in, uh, uh, in the final exam and these students have scored more than 70 marks in the final exam. 
So, this is a exact uh, two class classification problem, uh, this is a class 1, this is class 2, class 1 is uh, less than 70 marks and uh, this is uh, equal to or uh, greater than 70 marks. So, now you know the label y and you know the x1 attendance and x2 midterm marks. Now, this is a supervised uh, learning problem. In this problem, we have a x, uh, x1 and x2, we do not have y. So, it is not a supervised problem. We can come up with the clustering, say two clusters or more than two clusters, uh, depending upon the data and the interaction behavior, how they interact with each other. We will talk about the clustering in detail um, in a separate class. So, this is to introduce the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. So, since you have seen supervised and unsupervised learning, can you list down two unsupervised learning problems from a data selection we did uh, in the last week? Uh, after listing down, please resume the video to continue. So, as I mentioned already, you can uh, use this uh, unsupervised algorithm uh, to form a, a groups for a class project or form a lab project. You may not want to form a group with a similar set of students, instead you want to mix and match. For that, you first you need to find what are the students behavior um, similar groups. Or you can use this unsupervised algorithm to provide a remedial content or extra coaching to them or uh, you, you, might, um, or you might want to give an uh, exam which is less difficult or teach a special course or something like that. Or you can compare the behavior among two groups, um, if you have a group A and group B and uh, you can uh, identify patterns among these two groups and compare the patterns uh, of group A and group B. The patterns can be like uh, order actions they do, you can identify mind patterns in the unsupervised algorithm. Also, you can develop clusters based on interaction data in Moodle or Tele. So, uh, the interaction data, uh, we can use it to create clustering algorithm and uh, create clusters to group the students into multiple groups and you can provide different level of recommendations to them. So, here we have types of supervised uh, learning that is uh, classification and regression. Uh, in supervised learning, classification again goes to binary uh, classification and multi-class classification. And we saw that binary classification has a 0 and 1, multi-class can have 1, 2, 3, 4 or apple, banana or something like that. In regression, the y is uh, uh, usually the uh, real number, the continuous variable like uh, the performance 65, 70, 75, something like that. So, in a classification problem, it aims to develop a model that could help in separating data into multiple categorical class. That is, in this class, I want to set into two class. I want to set into two class. I want to uh, two class. So, it is a binary classification problem. The goal here is to predict the class, uh, class or category uh, to a particular instance uh, will belong to. For example, if I have a new data, um, say new data with attendance, um, uh, new data with attendance 63 and the midterm marks is say 40 or 50, where this data belongs to. This data belongs to class 1 or class 2. It is based on where you draw this line, right? Uh, how do you draw the line? We will talk about that in detail. It is based on where you draw, draw the line. Suppose if I have a line drawn on, um, suppose if I have a line drawn like this, this data might belong to the other class. So, it depends on the where you draw the line, we will talk about that in detail. But uh, if in a classification algorithm, when a new data comes, the goal is to put the data into either this class or that class. In regression, uh, again it is uh, subdivided into multiple like a simple and multiple. In simple, it is a linear, non-linear and uh, also in multiple, it is a linear, non-linear. We will talk about a simple linear regression now. Uh, the output is the continuous variable. This is the same plot we discussed a few slides ago. There is attendance and the final marks. If I draw a line, a linear line which fits all this data, which assumes that there is a linear relationship between attendance and final marks and I have to uh, fit these values in a linear line. So, the simple linear regression uh, aims to fit uh, this, uh, this two marks like a x1 into y1. Uh, for example, I just go here. So, this is uh, x i, this is uh, y i, it is trying to fit the linear relation between these two, it assumes that there is a linear relation between these two variables. Consider there is a new data or new student uh, with attendance equal to 65 percentage. So, what will be the student's uh, mark in the final exam? So, since we fit this line using a linear regression algorithm, 
we can able to tell what will be the student score in the final score. Since it is 65, we can draw the line and the mark will be around uh, something like uh, 68 or uh, 69 or something like that. So, in a linear regression algorithm, instead of classifying in the new students data into either class 1 or class 2 or class 3, you are trying to find the scores uh, using the continuous uh, variable. So, you have seen uh, just the introduction of uh, classification and regression. We will talk about this classification and regression algorithms in detail, but given the introduction of classification and regression algorithms, can you list down minimum two differences? After listening it down, watching the video to continue. So, the classification algorithm creates a model uh, to group the data into two or more classes, binary or uh, more n not binary classifiers. Uh, the data, the y is uh, usually the discrete or categorical, where like uh, example student will pass or fail or student will get more than 80 marks or not, something like that. Whereas in uh, regression, the model trying to fit the given data points that is x, y to the x, i to the y. Also, the y is continuous data, the real number and uh, it is trying to predicting the score. For example, a new student comes, what will be the score instead of trying to put him into whether the student will pass or fail or student will get less than 70, more than 70 or more than 80. We are trying to predict the score. That is why the difference between these two. So, there are few algorithms for supervised learning that is uh, linear regression, nearest neighbor, naive base, uh, addition tree. Uh, we will see these algorithms in detail, not support data machine or random forest, but we will see the first four algorithms in detail. For the unsupervised learning, uh, there are two types again uh, clustering and uh, competitive learning. Uh, we, like we saw in the supervised learning, there is a um, classification regression. In unsupervised learning, there are two types, like clustering and competitive learning. In clustering, again, there are many types of clustering. We just gave two of them here. Uh, so, k means clustering and hierarchy clustering. We will discuss this in detail. To summarize, in this video, we saw what is supervised learning, uh, what is unsupervised learning, and we saw unsupervised learning, what is uh, type of supervised learning algorithm such as um, classification and regression. In um, unsupervised learning, we saw a clustering technique. We did not discuss much, but we introduced what is clustering. We will uh, discuss each of this algorithm with example algorithm in detail in further classes. Thank you.